Pink is running on the Crea SOM on my desk and the board is connected to my local network. I've opened my Chrome web browser and I'll connect to Jupyter Lab running on the board by browsing to its host name. I could also browse to it using its IP address. I'll log on to the board and browse to the FPL and examples directory. I'll start by opening my first Jupyter Notebook, which is an introduction to the Jupyter Lab environment. I won't show anything specific to Pink for now and instead concentrate on the basics of Jupyter, which will help us later when we get to the Pink examples. What you can see is Jupyter Lab, and I have opened a Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter is an interactive computing environment. The Notebook document mixes narrative text, which you can see, with live code cells, text output, plots, multimedia, including images, video, audio, and interactive widgets. Jupyter Lab has three main components. The web application that I'm using right now, a kernel, a process that starts with the notebook to run my user code, and Jupyter has support for different kernel types to support different languages. We use the Python kernel with Pink, and we support Python 3. The last part is the notebook document. You can see I have some notebooks on the board file system. I can download these notebooks, open them on my desktop, and view the raw contents. I can share them, upload them to the internet, and it's worth pointing out that GitHub natively supports notebooks. A notebook uploaded to GitHub will render natively and you can view it as you would within Jupyter Notebook. I can also upload notebooks and other documents to the board from my desktop by dragging and dropping in Jupyter Lab. Some basics, you've seen the sidebar already where I can access the file system. You can see a green dot represents a notebook that is currently running. I can see running sessions and terminate kernels if I wanted to. The launcher is where new notebooks and other windows are created. I can create a new notebook or open a terminal. This is a terminal running on my board. There are some keyboard shortcuts that you should familiarize yourself with if you're going to use Jupyter. You can run a cell from the toolbar, but I'll be mainly using keyboard shortcuts. Jupyter is primarily an interactive environment for running code, so the most important thing is to know how to do this. This is the first code cell in this notebook. Notice we can swap between code and markdown. We can change a cell to either a code cell or a markdown cell. I can press the play button or execute a code cell by pressing control and enter or shift and enter to execute the cell and move to the next cell. I can also execute a cell multiple times and I can also run them out of order and make changes to the code. This can be very useful and powerful for development and debug, but if I do this, I will lose the reproducibility of my notebook. It is good practice to make sure your code works when run sequentially, especially if you intend to share this document with someone else. You can see the modification that I made won't work if I try to run this notebook again from the beginning. The order a cell was executed is indicated by the number beside the cell. I can restart, clear all output, and save the notebook like this, or I can execute cells and save results embedded in the document. When a cell is running, you will see an asterisk. You can wait, or you can interrupt the cell by stopping it if you think there's a problem with the code. There is additional information in this notebook, and there are some excellent comprehensive guides to Jupyter that you can find online and are referenced in this notebook.